Hello, everybody. I am Juhi Khera from the Communication Batch of 2022, and I will be your host for this seminar. Thank you all so much for joining in. We are all gathered here for a live interaction with Barun Humna Bhatkar. An alumnus of the Advertising Batch of 2018, Barun has been serving time as a writer at The Glitch ever since his graduation and has climbed his way up to the rank of the senior manager in the creative team. He works on creative pitches, brand integration ideas, content strategy, and daily social copies, and trolls his curated websites uh, in his spare time. Thank you, for, thank you so much for joining in, Varun. Before we begin, a quick note to all the participants. Please note down your questions in the Q&A section below, and Varun shall answer them at the end of this session. Hey, hey, thanks, Joey. Uh, so, shall we start? Definitely. So, to begin with, we would like to know about your journey as a student and then as an intern, and now as a professional. Um, how did you develop an interest in writing? Okay, uh, so my interest in writing was uh, fairly straightforward. Um, I've, I've, I've kind of been writing a little bit of poetry, a little bit of stories ever since I was around 16-ish. But when I actually got my first copywriting lesson and my first creative writing lesson, that's when I realized that writing is what I want to do full time, eventually at some point in, in my life. I didn't know when. Um, so further on, when I learned more about advertising as a field itself, then I realized that there is a niche I could carve out for myself. And that's when I chose to uh, become a copywriter uh, at that point and then um, in terms of internships I got my first internship at Ogilvy Chennai through uh, uh, our, <laughs> through our institute of course and um, yeah so that was the beginning and I handled a bunch of clients uh, when I was in uh, Ogilvy Chennai uh, Vodafone uh, SRM University couple of others and then I moved on to an internship at the rickshaw uh, for my last time. And that kind of cemented that, yes, this is copywriting is actually what it is. And then uh, I applied for a job at the glitch and I got it. So that's kind of been my journey from uh, aspiring, maybe going to write someday to copywriter in the making to copywriter. So, yeah. That's great to know. So adding to that, how did the projects and these internships and your exposure as a student at SCMC shape your dreams? And do you think the assignment and the coursework um, help in applying your skills in the professional field? To some extent, for sure. Because what happens is as a writer, you never know what project you will get put on, right? So one day maybe you're working on an ad for some phone that Samsung's going to launch and the next day you you are working on pitches for uh, feminine hygiene products and like you need to know both ends of the spectrum if you're going to work well as a writer and you you can't shy away from any subject so you you do need to gather as much info as you can even though you, even if you're not like even if you don't know 100% of the subject, even if you're not an expert at all of these topics, it's fine because even like a starting point to an idea can come from something that you've picked up uh, by uh, like during your studies at college. So that helps a lot. Um, so th that's the coursework, of course, which gives you a lot of facts and factoids about different, different things in life, which, at some point might become your consumer's touch point uh, with your brand, right? So that's very important. Um, as for uh, the projects and everything, um, so here's, here's where your initiative as a student comes in. Um, early on, I figured out that I wanted to get into advertising and I realized that advertising means you have to be close to films uh, because everything, uh, well, before the pandemic, digital agencies used to churn out films at a moment's notice, right? Um, you saw something on, uh, that's trending on Twitter, you figured out, oh, wait, this can work for my brand, you have to get out quickly. You have to get, uh, push the work out quickly, right? 
so you have to be close to films as well so i chose a couple of film oriented uh, projects and that's where uh, my initiative as a student back then came so yes projects are important but only if you make them work for you and you should make them work for you okay and uh, you know there is so much competition in the industry especially from post graduate students and students from specialized fields so how did you manage that pressure and did the industry ever make you feel like just a ug student uh this is not that easy to answer to be honest because see uh, first and foremost whenever you get out there don't treat yourself as uh, someone who has to be baby you know if you do that then they will treat you as such uh, but no most places will not most places will expect you to hold yourself to a, a certain standard which and if that is their expectation you should and if you hold yourself to that standard you hold yourself accountable and you put in the work then most places will not uh like ha huh, whatever ug student hai. like once in a while they'll ask you how old you are and you reply like 21 or 19 or like 20 or something and they'll be like oh such a baby but that's about it like when when it comes to work they won't do that and as for competition from uh, post graduate students of course there will be but um it 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 won't be like um if you give an idea as opposed to a post graduate student giving an idea um they won't choose their idea just because they've done a post grad and doing a post grad does not mean they're better than you in any way because most of this industry is built on people who have me you know you you do come across the occasional person who used to be like a data scientist but wants to be a copywriter because that's what their calling is right you do get the occasional person like that and they are good at they are good at what they do and similarly for us uh, us as in undergraduate students uh, it's it's about uh, what you can do and not what degree you hold most of the times the degree helps but it doesn't guarantee that you will make the next clio winning award you know clio award winning ad you know? so so yeah Okay. I hope that kind of answers it. Yes, it does. Thank you for that. And uh, through this, we know that your major profession is writing, and you have some experience in writing for video content as well, and definitely for advertisements as well. So, uh, what is the difference between the two? So, uh, in majority branded video content. Um, is a piece of content that is so engaging that uh the brand the brand's involvement in is in this piece is firstly very subliminal like you know the brand is there but it's fairly in the background it doesn't scream out advertising at you it doesn't throw itself at you desperately trying to sell something to you so it is there in the background but the piece is done to delight primarily and a good example of this would be um there was this uh, music video which was done by uh, done with ranveer singh and uh, was done by it was done by a clothing brand so even if you go even if you just search for uh, ranveer singh clothing brand rap video you'll find it and it's a really 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 well written rap uh, uh, which involves ranveer singh kaam bhari and a couple of other big uh, names and this was done when uh, gali boy was kind of making the rounds everywhere and everybody was talking about it and uh, oh, it was jack and jones yeah so jack and jones as a brand is very in the background there's just uh, the art in the music video is kind of piles of clothes and people sitting on top of that huge mountain of clothes and rapping and that's that's kind of the only place you actually see jack and jones but the fact that i actually remembered this when it like it's been what four four years five years since it's come out but the fact that i remembered this is uh, speaks for itself right uh, and i remember more of the rap than actually jack and jones hit house mein 
so that's kind of what it does it's it's a piece which you can with the rewatchability value of it is really really high um i'll give you another small example uh, there's uh, i'm sure some of you have heard of this uh, organization called reporters without boundaries it's essentially um it's it's like a watchdog ngo which keeps an eye on freedom of press level uh, in different countries and um what they realized was that they people needed a way to get news out and they also needed a way to access um uh, resources which journalists would ordinarily need and if there is a certain amount of internet suppression that's happening wherever you live that's kind of difficult so how how does this work then how, is there any way this ngo could bridge the gap between the reporters who need these resources and uh, uh, you know countries who are refusing to give give it to them what they did what they realized was uh, <laughs> and this is a very very innovative solution so what they did was they went to minecraft of all places it's a multiplayer uh, open world game where you can literally construct anything so you can mine for resources you can make whatever you want right you probably know um they went to minecraft and they built a giant library literally built a giant library in the game for um journalists to access the, this library which is full of the needed resources information citations all of that all that data which you would ordinarily find on block websites in certain countries was all there and this was their initiative so it's not a video integration it's not a video content integration but it is a content integration done at such a level that um you instantly validate reporters without borders like this there's no doubt about what they're doing right it's it's very straight forward and and plus it actually serves a purpose so this is a brand integration done at the best level possible and so this stuff like this also which exists out there which is what makes me keep keeps me on my toes as a creator and a like right? everybody aspires to do that so that in a nutshell can is the full potential of branded content as a whole so you can you can either do your tie ups with your tvf which uh, on academy and all these udemy and all these brands are doing where Uh, in their web series every 15 minutes the character just turns around and says oh i don't know bro but i would have if if i had gone to an academy you know that happens um so that is one level and um this reporters without borders what they're doing is like the other level so that's that's kind of the full scalability of uh what branded content can do right and building on that um what if someone wants to identify a niche and build their portfolio according to that what would your tips be okay so building your portfolio and identifying your niche is actually a process of trial and error and i would suggest that you start as soon as you can um level 1 could be uh trying to access so if if in case uh, lectures don't work out for you right you you're sitting in class and you're trying to understand but it's not going through but you feel that if i dig a little deeper maybe i would enjoy this do that and as soon as you can right um because what happens with your portfolio is uh ideally you would want to know what you're doing when you get into Uh, an internship ideally if you don't know what you what you want to do when you're getting into an internship it's completely there's no there's nothing wrong with it but it would be a leg up for sure because like like i said if you identify that you want to become an account planner before getting into the internship then you can specifically ask them for the role of a, for, of an account planner right as opposed to going in confused between oh mujhe writer banna hai or i want to i don't know do client servicing or do design which are design especially because the stronger your portfolio the stronger your work in design the better it is right it's a lot more tangible in terms of these are the number of list of creatives that i have made 
Similarly, for copywriting, like you can literally show a list of copies you've written, a list of creatives you've come up with. Uh, for planning, you uh, it'll be more of a campaign basis, right? Campaign and pitch basis. Pitching applies to everyone, but more so for the planner because in pitching uh, for pitch for pitching, uh, planning becomes like your foundation, the foundation on which uh, all of this is built. So if you don't, so yeah. Uh, basically what you need to do is try and ID what you want to do before an internship, or at least if you think you ID something, ask for it during an internship, which gives you a good advantage. So once you, once you've asked them that, Hey, listen, I want to work on either, uh, servicing or planning, uh, teams, then you have two portfolio or two bodies of work that you can use as a referral the next time you uh, go for your internship. Right. So during your first internship, narrow down to two things, right? So you tell them that Mujhe thoda copy. I, I, I want to do a little bit of copy work. I want to do a little bit of servicing work. Is that okay? They give you the, uh, if they give you the position, you probably rotate between the two for a week each or two weeks each. But at the end of those two weeks, you still have something to show. for it. And that is how I think you can go about things and still be curious, still explore and, you know, kind of get everything that you want. By a second internship, I highly recommend that you focus on what you think you will be doing in the ad industry for the next three years or whichever industry for that matter, right? So your second internship should be a solid 40, 45 days of you doing nothing but that one thing that you've narrowed down on. And you, therefore you extract more work out of it. You also, I recommend you go to your employer and say that, uh, the goal for the end of my internship is, uh, I want to be involved in writing the script. Even if I co-write it with you, or even if whatever we sit and, uh, break it down and we jam together and you're the final one who's writing it, that's fine with me, but I want to be involved as far as I can, right? Tell them that that's your goal. And once you have that goal, uh, for example, if it's writing a script at the end of those 40 days, make sure you have a, a script to your name. So the next time you apply, you can show that like, I was an intern, but I wrote this, like, I helped write this, whatever, uh, or the idea came from me. So that, that, that will just like boost your chances of employment a lot, having a major project on your portfolio and set it as a goal. That was very insightful and uh, advertising in such a, is such a broad industry. So you, you, you know, you could have faced a lot of rejections as well. And even in the creative department, people face a lot of rejections for their work. So how do you deal with that? So um, the very first project that I ever pitched as an employee uh, was rejected outright. <laughs> So what had happened was uh, there's a brand called Edelweiss and in 2018, uh, they wanted to uh, put out a video of, uh, for the national anthem. And at that point, some games were happening in Jakarta. I, I do not remember which, but the athletes are going to be there. So they said, since we, we are kind of sponsoring this uh, whatever games in Jakarta, what we can do is we can uh, get some time with the athletes. You can go and shoot there and uh, yeah, just overlay it with uh, the national anthem and we'll play the anthem in the theaters as they usually do. And that was their whole media and creative pitch. And uh, basically we stayed up in office till 4.30 and we were, we were going ham on this because uh, they had said that uh, if you get the pitch right, tum log Jak Jakarta jao. everybody wanted to go to Jakarta. Nobody wanted to be left out. So everybody was in office till 4 a.m. ruggedoing it out, hoping that uh, this project comes through. But it didn't. And considering we had been in office for 36 hours straight, 48 hours straight, and we've been uh, really <laughs> going crazy after this pitch, um, 
the i mean and there was no closure in the sense that uh, we 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 were hounding them for the next few weeks asking ki acha laga kya is it good uh, what, what is the deal are, are you guys stay signing us on what is happening uh, they just gave one uh, this gave a one word reply which said no and that was the end of it so i mean rejection is and this is the this is the first thing that happened to me when i uh, entered the agency right rejection is a part and parcel of what happens um and the way to deal with that is to improve yourself so you face fewer and fewer of them in uh, in the future what what you should do is you shouldn't be afraid to ask as many questions as you need to right so when they gave us that brief uh um, we did not account for where we would be shooting and um like we found out much later that we had imagined scenes in stadiums and they did not have access to stadiums they had access only and only to the athletes which like we we imagined we would be shooting it in a stadium because athletes were so where else would you shoot right but things like that you need to be on top of. like you need to ask 20000 questions make sure that what you are doing matches with what uh, your uh, client is thinking about because very often what the brief is and what the picture in your client's head is is quite different so pester your client servicing and account planning and all those guys and just pester them with as many questions as you can once you have 100% of the information in your hand then go ahead and validate your ideas that and thinking more creatively more often is the best way to get around this kind of thing right and um what for someone who wants to build a career in the writing field what would your tips be for them and what do students uh, you know generally should look forward to in scmc or aspirants who wish to join scmc what should they look forward to uh so anyone who wants to build a career in writing should first consume and when i say consume i mean either uh, read it doesn't need to be books by big authors and publications that's not the case uh you just need you just need to read often and you just need to read a lot so for example i do not read a lot of books not not very often at least i like i would try and I, i would maybe finish like five six books in a year in a year but i read a lot of articles um i would read a lot of articles about um, advertising and marketing i would read a lot of uh, articles about on uh, websites like national geographic and all that stuff because i am extremely interested in that so uh, it doesn't have to be Uh, amazingly famous artists or uh, authors or anything like that so just read what interests you but read a lot and also watch a lot of movies and consume general uh, social media um, as per the trends right that will help you a lot you'll know what people you 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 kind of feel a pulse of what the people are talking about and that is generally what you need so yeah there's that and um also write a lot write as much as you can uh, write anything it doesn't have to be it, it can be very bad shyery or it it can be uh, nice short stories anything is fine just keep doing it over and over again so you get accustomed to writing what you need to express that's the most important thing um yeah and as for uh, pre- present students and aspirants what they can look forward to um what do you want to look forward to <laughs> look forward uh, to that <laughs> <laughs> no but um the the industry is challenging for sure and as long as you have realized that this is what you want you can look forward to anything you want uh just make sure that uh a creative job is what you want to do and which side of it just make sure you're clear on that and you can look forward to working with some of the biggest brands some of the biggest names um you'll you'll have some really really crazy moments where uh this extremely amazing idea has just hit you out of nowhere and you know you're winning even before 
uh, you won. And that feeling is this, this very little like it. It's, uh, it's a different kind of high. <laughs> so that, that, that kind of adrenaline, I, I look forward to all the time. And that's, that's a part, definitely a part of why I'm here. And yeah, so there's very, there's very few other jobs where you can just, where Nawazuddin Siddiqui comes and he's like, ha, sir, script polo. That has happened. So, and yeah, I, I was quaking in my boots there. So there are, there are some of those moments which happen and they're worth it. Okay. So that was a very interesting conversation so far, Varun. Now we have some questions from the audience members. So I'll just read them out to you and you can answer them. The first question is, the field requires a lot of content brainstorming and being in a professional environment, how does one deal with creative blocks with deadlines and seniors to answer to especially? I'm sorry, with what blocks? Creative blocks. Creative blocks. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the way to deal with uh, creative blocks uh, to just shut off your laptop, uh, go drink some chai, maybe read the newspaper, take 20 minutes off, come back, try again. There is no other way around creative blocks. The more you train yourself to think critically and creatively, the easier it is going to be. So it's just practice, practice, practice. Uh, you train your mind to come up with those ideas and think that fast, it'll happen. Uh, but before you get to a point where you can confidently do that, there are going to be sleepless nights. So, SNA ki teen saal 9 to 5 kaam kiya and that's just how we are now with creative gods, that doesn't happen. Um, so, yeah, you do have to train yourself to think like that. So, okay. yeah, that's kind of how you get around those. And as for your seniors and your deadlines, all those can be pushed. Every, every deadline can be pushed is what I've learned. Um, there are some deadlines which are like absolute dead stop, you know, and you can't mess around with those. But there are deadlines where uh, the minute you get that deadline, right, uh, you have to argue it out with either your client or your client servicing. Um, saying ki, boss, this deadline is kind of ridiculous. I cannot submit three scripts by tomorrow evening. That's not going to happen. So why don't we all come to a conclusion and negotiate for a better day, right? That's going to happen. So, but there are also situations where uh, you can't negotiate. And in that case, uh, I don't know, just buy a lot of coffee, I guess. You're in for a late night. Right. And um, has the SCMC network helped you in connecting better in the industry? In a way, it has. Uh, like, mm, I don't know about uh, places outside Glitch because uh, I have stuck to Glitch for the past three years since I've graduated, right? Um, but apart from that, uh, there are a lot of people who have come from the... Uh, SIMC uh, PG course. So there's, there's a lot of them. There's a couple of our, uh, our colleges of alumni who are sticking around. So what generally happens is you go for, go for a coffee at the coffee machine and everything, and you run into someone there who's talking about some biases or something. You strike up a conversation and then you learn that, oh, hey, this guy's probably like two years elder to me and I uh, did, did not even know that he was uh, my super senior, right? And that kind of helps you bond with them. But it, like, and depending on how much of a contact you keep in with them after that, your contacts become useful. So it's definitely an icebreaker. And it's a good icebreaker. So what, and what, uh, what happens is uh, so many agencies are populated with Simbi kids that you like eventually you do come across someone and eventually you also come across someone that oh wait wait I, I know like seven people in the, from your college and that also becomes uh, uh, an icebreaker so in that sense that's how it's helped me so yeah okay 
and we have an interesting question how much of a role do memes play in modern modern day writing and marketing are clients more receptive to the idea now next nice. okay uh who who we have we have a meme page at admin in the audience hmm? no yeah um memes memes are kind of uh, what i do for a living a part of my living anyway because uh was working for uh, netflix's uh, social media account at one point and i mean sacred games means sick without means sacred games would have would have blown up maybe half of what it is what it has blown up to be right so definitely like what you need to keep in mind is your brand's language now if you have a company like accenture dropping memes on their social media their stock price will crash so yes memes are important but not everywhere you <laughs> look uh learn to uh, read the brand's language and if you think it is possible then pitch it but just be careful <laughs> memes can backfire and you can't use them everywhere you you have to be very sensitive with the way you use your humor especially in india i i agree with that that's absolutely relatable okay our last question for the day will be can you give a little bit of insight into how all the departments work and what the environment is like inside an agency for instance glitch how all the departments work okay uh so gen okay i'll i'll talk about a pitch scenario okay so when you're pitching for new business it's generally the planners that kind of start with the brief um they would mine data with whatever tools your agency has at hand um then try and make sense of the data they try and bring out insights right this data gathering um, and insight mining and uh, competitive analysis and what other brands are doing and all that kind of stuff that kind of becomes the basis of your brief so in at least in uh, Uh, with the glitch uh, the account planning and the um, client servicing together will work on this bit and they'll make the clients ask very clear into, uh, and they'll translate it into an insight and a, uh, whatever data led kind of uh, positioning and all that stuff um then this brief would come to us where we by ourselves will obviously do some amount of research Uh, a creative person doing research won't be any won't won't be data heavy because we're not working with tools or anything of that sort. So it'll be more of like cultural zeitgeists and insights and all that kind of stuff. So we would come up with uh, that, and then you would all sit on a brainstorm. In the brainstorm, uh, what we look for is an either an idea or like a copy which. we can squeeze a bunch of ideas out of it can't be like uh, a one hit wonder like that that mostly for most pitches that won't work because if you're taking over a company's business you need an idea where you can squeeze out repeatable uh, little ideas from that uh, so all your content pieces your memes your creatives your your banner ads your um, out of home advertisements your it, digitally integrated ideas should all uh, come out of that one idea one big idea which is correct and that is extremely important um so once we have that big idea we can then uh, and by the way design uh, is also involved in this. so in in the brainstorm everybody is in it's a free for all whoever is available just shows up for the meeting and uh, someone gives out the briefing and then we all start brainstorming so it can it can go either way you can either get really nonsensical ideas you can get like amazing con winning ideas it's, it's uh, really depends on what you come up with so after that um it goes to creative mock ups and all that stuff so once all the meaty bit is done 
देन यू सिट इन फिगर आउट अच्छा ये क्रिएटिव के लिए कौन सा कॉपी लगेगा ये क्रिएटिव के लिए कौन सा कॉपी लगेगा ऑल दैट सो यू मेक अ कपल ऑफ मॉक क्रिएटिव्स वंस यू हैव योर आइडियाज टुगेदर यू राइट देम ऑल आउट पुट देम ऑन अ डेक ऑन अ प्रेजेंटेशन एंड दिस डेक यू देन प्रेजेंट टू योर क्लाइंट दैट इज रफली हाउ थिंग्स फंक्शन नाउ देयर इज अनदर दिस प्रोडक्शन एंड ऑल दैट स्टफ व्हिच आई थिंक uh third year students in your batch would be knowing for ad, uh, advertising production and film making so i'm not going to get into that but there is a production wing there are producers there are assistant directors there are directors assistants as well and yeah so uh, then there's an entire edit team and uh, all that um those guys get involved in the uh, pr- uh, production leg of things so once the client is actually signed off on something. so that is kind of roughly speaking quickly that's how things uh, work all right so we still have a lot of questions coming in but due to time restrictions we have to limit ourselves here but hopefully uh, varun we can all come and in touch with you and interact with you outside of this forum and take your guidance sure sure absolutely thank you so much varun for taking your time out and sharing your experiences with us it was truly an intriguing intriguing session and i'm sure it gave us all a good ground base into the industry i hope so yeah i want to take this moment and also thank all the participants for attending this session and we look forward to having many more such insightful seminars for you all stay home stay safe and thank you